Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Why do Muslims sacrifice animals? And why do Muslims eat meat? This question tends to come up around the time of Eid al Adha, when Muslims sacrifice animals as a religious obligation. Now, the first thing we need to ask is why is this question only asked of Muslims? Jews, Christians, even in certain instances, Hindus, they all believe in sacrificing animals for the pleasure of a greater being or a deity, whoever or whichever being that they may subscribe to. In terms of the consumption of meat, if you look at the world over, it's not only Muslims that eat meat, Jews, Christians, agnostics, atheists, they all consume meat. If you look at uh, the meat industry, you look at all the outlets, all the takeaways that sell meat and meat products, it's a bit strange that this question is only asked of Muslims. Nonetheless, what's the Islamic position on slaughtering animals for consumption and on eating meat? There's a fundamental principle which we as Muslims believe in, and that is Allah the Almighty is the ultimate as well as the original lawmaker, legislator. It is Allah who declares what is permissible, halal, or what is impermissible, haram. No human, no creation at any time has the right to overrule what Allah has declared halal or what Allah has declared haram, what Allah has declared permissible or impermissible. If you look at animals, in the Quran, there are various verses, and I'm not going to quote the verses for the sake of brevity, where Allah talks about animals being declared as permissible to be of use to humans. So at in the form of a conveyance, in the form of using products that come from animals like milk or, or honey, in the form of using the skin that comes from animals, and also in the form of slaughtering certain animals which are permissible for slaughter so that it could be consumed, it could be eaten by humans. The, uh, the rights that we enjoy or the rights that any of the creation of the Almighty Allah enjoy, those rights have been bestowed to them by Allah. Allah is the original bestower of rights and the ultimate bestower of rights. It is Allah who decrees and Allah who declares who will enjoy what right and to what extent. So Allah who is most just, Allah is most, who is most compassionate has declared that it is permissible for humans to slaughter animals and to consume the meat of animals and that it does not go against the rights of those animals. When it comes to animal rights, long before the growing kind of activism that you see today around animal rights and the promotion and advocation of a vegan culture or a ve vegetarian culture, long before this, Islam has already advocated animal rights. There are multiple examples from the Quran and from the, treat uh, and from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go into the examples. So slaughtering animals for consumption or using animals for the benefit of, uh, of man does not necessarily contradict the rights of animals. In Islam, we are still encouraged, not only encouraged, instructed to uphold the rights of animals. When you keep an animal as a pet or even animals in general, and even at the time of slaughter, the Prophet sallallahu had said, Allah has made it incumbent upon you that whatever you do, do it well. Even when it comes to the act of slaughter, then slaughter well. Fulfill the rights of the animal. Don't put the animal through unnecessary pain. Don't put the animal through any unnecessary comfort. Uh, make sure that uh, the animal's rights are upheld, even if, uh, if it's going to be slaughtered. So why is the focus only on religion when it comes to how animals are kept before slaughter? Why not on, on, on mass co commercialization of uh, the breeding of animals and then the slaughtering of animals, the meat that is being consumed the world over every day throughout the year, how are those animals bred? How are those animals fed? How are those animals kept? Why is there either not adequate um, attention being given to that or adequate scrutiny being given to that? Why does this only become a topical issue or a point of discussion when it comes to that part of the year when Muslims uh, slaughter animals as a sacrifice? Now, when it comes to the consumption of meat, it is halal permissible to eat that meat which, which Sharia has declared as halal and permissible. For example, in Islam, swine or the meat of pig, it, it's not permissible. So that, that won't be permissible. And there are other categories. I don't want to go into the jurisprudence of it. But 
generally speaking, if it's slaughtered in a halal way, then you can consume the meat, which is generally uh, decreed in the Sharia as, as permissible for, for consumption. Yes, the Prophet wasallam, peace be upon him, the Prophet Muhammad had said that or had encouraged us not to eat meat excessively for health reasons, but to eat meat is permissible. If someone stays away from eating meat altogether for health reasons, the doctor has uh, ordered it, or because you just don't like meat, then that's fine. It's not compulsory to consume meat, but it is permissible to consume meat. There's an important thing though. If someone does not consume meat and they are Muslim, it will not be correct for them to abhor the consumption of meat and to criticize the consumption of meat because you cannot override the command of Allah. Allah has made it halal. Allah has made it permissible. You cannot make it haram. So your abstention should either be because of personal preference. I don't like meat or health reasons or something like that. Not because you abhor it or even worse, that you deem it barbaric or you deem it inhumane or you deem it impermissible because then you would be overriding what Allah has decreed as permissible. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the most compassionate of human beings. Even non-Muslims have um, written about that and have borne testimony in that regard. Yet he consumed meat, yet he slaughtered animals at times for consumption, at times for sacrifice and sacrificial meat can also be consumed. You can consume it yourself. You give it to friends and family. You give it to the poor as well. The consumption of meat has health benefits if eaten in the correct proportions. In certain parts of the world, if there's no meat in your diet altogether, it's harmful for your health. And then there's also the price factor. If you want to live life and, and eat so that you can survive without having any meat in your diet, that vegan or vegetarian lifestyle can become rather expensive and it's not affordable to everyone. I don't want to prolong the discussion. I just wanted to share with you a few principal points. I hope this clarifies why Muslims slaughter animals for sacrifice and why Muslims slaughter animals for consumption and eat meat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.